Hi folks, I got a treat for you today. This pile of parts you see right here. This is actually a, a cuckoo and quail clock from around 1880 or so. And uh, we're gonna assemble it. Uh, I've actually gone ahead and rebushed it, uh, done the, uh, the pivot polishing, uh, just to save time for the video, just to keep the video at a manageable length. So come along and, and join us as we assemble this thing and, and we'll get it set up. It's a beautiful cuckoo and quail clock and we'll show it to you when it's all done. Quite large and quite heavily carved and I will announce that it's going to be for sale. Well, once we get it all assembled and tested out it'll be available to, for sale to the public. I'll let you know at the end uh, what the price will be and if anybody's interested in contact me, me through the email. Uh, that'll be uh, below in the comments. All right, folks, let's get started. I'm going to put my plastic gloves on here to keep my fingerprints off of the movement. Zoom me out a little bit here. Yep. Just like that. All right, let's get started here. Our movement standoffs here. This is the front plate. You can see here some of the bushings I put in. And there's one there, there's one there. There's uh, several on the back plate too. So there was a fair amount of wear on this movement. Okay. Let's start by putting the wheels in here. This will be for the cuckoo. Cuckoo side, I should say. These two wheels are similar. One is for the uh, time. This one I didn't mark with a T, so we'll put that in here. This is the quail. This goes on the quarter hour. Now the cuckoo and quail clocks are a little bit rarer than the normal cuckoo clock. They contain two birds, one being the quail, which calls out and calls the, comes out and calls the quarter hours. You can see right here it's our quail bird, and the uh, the cuckoo, uh, of course, calls the hours uh, on the hour. See this guy right here. A little bit more going on here just, than just your average cuckoo clock. This goes on the quail train here. Let me zoom you back in here. This way a little bit so you can see what's going on. And back it out a little bit there. Put the escape wheel in. This is the quail warning wheel slash stop wheel if you want to call it that. There's two pins on this one. So we'll put this one in here. We do have to pay attention to indexing here. I'm going to try to set it up so that we're close. It'll probably uh, move as we assemble it so we may have to go back in and re-index it after we have it assembled. This is the cuckoo warning slash stop wheel. This one has one pin on it. Let's put the back plate out here. Get our flies here. This one's the cuckoo. I had it marked. And we need to get the quail fly. This is this here. 
Now, we'll put some of these levers in here. Let's see, this one goes over here. This is the quail lever here. This out, and let's see, I'm going to get a strike hammer. Put the uh, cuckoo hammer in here first. And this is the upper cuckoo lever. This is the lower cuckoo lever here. See that? We're going to put the Strike hammer for the quail in here. All right, now let's see here. Well, now it's just a matter of getting all these pivots in. I will say this lever here for the hammer it has to go down underneath this wheel here, so we'll have to sort of finagle that down. Now you can start from any direction you want to. You can start from the bottom up. Uh, fishing these pivot holes or pivots in the pivot holes where you can start from the left or the right. I, uh, I'm going to start from the, the right here. I find that's a little bit easier maybe to deal with getting this hammer lever underneath this wheel here, which is what we're about to do if I can maneuver this here. And a little bit of maneuvering is involved here, that's for sure. Trying to get underneath this wheel. Do that. Well, that was the easiest thing to do. Yeah, one in there. Let's see. There we go. That's underneath. You want to set this uh, quail lever in here. This is what shuts off the quail train. I'm going to snaggle this in here. It's not always the easiest, easiest thing to do either. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna knock the wheels out. And get this pivot hole back in there. that is a little pin that these sit in on this end here which acts as the pivot and then we have a normal pivot up here on the top all right we'll drop this in there and probably finagle this one in too Set this one on that pin. Okay. Now we'll just get these wheels in here. the door there so we're not bothered by the phone. Now once we have these pivots in here on this side, just put the nuts in and sort of start holding the plates down. 
get our escape wheel pivot in here. Okay, let's just ladybugs flying all in here. We've had an unusually warm winter here in southeastern Pennsylvania with very little snow. Flowers are seem like they're starting to come up already. It's crazy. This is February, what, February 9th? And it's uh, close to 60 degrees out today. Alright, we're gonna just loosely put these nuts on here. We're gonna work our way to the left here. We're gonna work on the cuckoo train. Get all these in. And we're gonna have to index the cuckoo train it looks like here. You can see that we're gonna need to do that. Alright, that's in. Just finger tighten these nuts for now. So we're like missing one of these nuts here. Hmm. Okay, I'll well, we'll have to get one. So we got those on. Let's see where we are with the indexing here. This has a little wire here that we need to put on to give some tension to the strike hammer. Side here. All right, I think we're going to need to go around that one more time on that, but for now we'll just put it in there. Well, I see we've made one mistake. I've got the warning lever on the wrong side of the quail warning wheel. It's got a pin that comes down through the top. That is not in.
was actually on the correct side. I just didn't have that in there. Now let's get this in here. In. We need to bring this lever up here. This uh, actually needs to be on the other side of this lever right here, so we'll just bend that up just a little bit so it's in place. These levers are real flexible, so it doesn't hurt to bend them a little bit. Alright. Well, let's see where we are here with the coil. Yeah, we're going to need to index that. This lever here actually needs to drop just as this pin on this wheel here is in place on this side over here so it can lock into place. And we'll need to slide this wheel out, disengage it from the wheel next to it so we can get that pin around there. Again, we're just disengaging this pinion uh, with this wheel and then moving it so that this pin is where it ought to be to get a good lock. This is what stops the train. size a little bit more difficult to index because you've got to get the cuckoo lift levers dropped off in the right sequence too as well as locking this wheel up here 
We're using this lever here. Now I'm going to put in the, um, the quail bellow lift lever right here. This actually has a pin. As you notice, we didn't put those in right away. We should be able to slip these in after the fact. This has like a slot in it right here. Let's see if we can just slide that in there, drop it in place. And we can put that pin back in. Make sure that this quail bellow drops just as it locks, and it does. You can see the lever. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's look at this cuckoo side here. See what we have to do here. Yeah, we're a little bit off here. Alright, so we're going to have to disengage this wheel here, get the pin in the right place so it locks properly. We'll see where we are with the, uh, the lift levers here for the bellows once we do this. Disengage this wheel. Okay, I want to bring this around. That might be pretty close. Let's see. As far as the lift lever goes for the bellows, it might be pretty close. We'll see where we end up here. What you want is you want the this lever here to just drop off as the train locks and the, the pin should be just the pin on, on this wheel should be just underneath the strike lever so we're going to try to get that set up properly sometimes it takes a couple of tries Engage this. And we're going to slide this over so it drops into the pivot hole. We'll drop this uh, strike lever into the pivot hole here. Let's see what we got with this here. Actually like that. You can see what we've got going on here. We got this. This is the uh, the cuckoo. This is the the uh, the, the high sound is here. The coo and the coo. These two levers right here lift up the bellows. Let's get this out of the way. Coo, coo. And this is the low sound, sorry about that. And this is the high bellow here, and this is the low sounding bellow here. So we want it just so it drops off on the low sounding bellow. That's the train locks, and you can see that's exactly what's happening. So I think we're good there. Tighten down these nuts. You can see.
see these early cuckoo moons are cast brass as opposed to the stamped ones you see now today. Tight nose since my nut driver doesn't really fit well in these nuts here. Um, I'm going to go try to locate the nut here. I don't know, maybe it was missing one already. Might have ended up in the cleaner by accident. I'm going to go check. And we'll get right back to you. All right, folks, I found the nut. It was actually in the bin. I just didn't see it. So we got all the nuts on there. We have one here and two on either side. There's nothing here. No post there. Let's put some lubrication on this now at this point. Lubricate our pivot holes. I use a, uh, a non-ammoniated clock cleaning solution now. And I'm not real pleased as to how these turn out. Um, I've been using ammoniated before and it's gives you a nice shiny finish. Although it does stink. It can be harsh on some movements. Especially the when it comes to the lacquer on certain modern movements. You can eat away the lacquer. And with these cast brass wounds, you do have to be careful about leaving it in for for too long. Uh, you can actually strip them so bare of lubrication that any lubrication you put on here can get sort of soaked away by the porous brass. So I like to not leave the movement in terribly long with these uh, early cuckoo movements. I'm going to lubricate the front here, although we can do that later I suppose. We'll just do it now. Get all these pivots. Get this one and that one. Anywhere you see a heat or a, I'm gonna say heat sink, oil sink, we're gonna lubricate it. Not in that one there. Okay. You notice this pivot hole here on the front. Uh, they're almost always badly worn because it's right up against this the main wheel here. Though the pinion is just on the other side of it. Uh, and it's underneath the hand post, which is here. I have to unscrew the hand post to get access to that bushing. So that's something you want to check to make sure. And when you clean it, you want to remove this post too to, to be able to thoroughly clean that pivot hole. Now we can start by putting some of these gears on here. First we have a little gear here that goes for the onto the cuckoo side. And they are, I have a little mark here. It's like a little cut. I'm going to line up the marks with the uh, arbor itself. Here we go. And let's get a uh, paper pin put in there. These taper pins kind of do go in a specific way. Mm -hmm. And it may go the other way. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get a better fit. Going in this direction here. Yeah. excess pin off here. Now 
this one goes over here. This is the quail. Again, we do have a cut here, which tells us which way to put it. Sort of a mark on the top of it here. It's like a line that goes goes across there, so you can put that on properly. Line it up with the the hole in the arbor. Let's find a pin that's going to fit in there. Let's see how this one fits. That way. Or this way. I think it's going to fit better the other way. Now this is the uh, cat wheel for the cuckoo. So that goes right here. You can see I left the screws in the plate here as I cleaned it. And that's just going to drop right in here. One of the things that's uh, important to remember is when you rebush, and I had to put a bushing in right here, make sure the bush does not extend up. Uh, beyond the plate, because this wheel has to, to ride right over top of it. I have to put a little bit of oil in here. Just a little drop. I'm getting low on oil here. cat wheel for the quail side which is right here. Uh, one thing I do not want to forget here is this strike set off lever. We're going to put that right there. That's going to go on soon. Let's get the quail cat wheel on here. See how this operates. Like this is the quarter after, this is the half past. down just a little bit.
bend this lever slightly just so we can make sure it drops in the slot of this uh, count wheel properly. I want this to ride right on top of the count wheel here. Not be too far up above it, because what happens is it tends to bounce up and down like that as it's calling, and it, the bird should not be going in and out the door like that, despite what you've seen on the cartoons. So we're actually going to bend it down some more. Of course, if we overdo it, we're going to have to bend it back up. That's pretty good right there. I like that. I'll let that be. You can always go back and make minor adjustments later if you wish to. Right, let's see if we can get this. This is the um, stride, the, the cuckoo set-off lever here. Now, that gets actuated by this pivoting lever right here. So let's go ahead and put this on. We'll just put a little drop of oil in here. Because this pivots on that stud. And we'll put a taper pin in here. A little bit of up and down play there, but it should be all right. I want it to be loose. Cut our excess off here. And when this sits on top of it, this should limit its up and down play also. We can slide this in here. And I think we can. Just need to go on the other side of that warning wheel. There we go. And underneath. Okay, it's in. Let's see where we are here. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and tap this in with a fiber faced hammer just to make sure that pin is tight. And the same thing with the pin on this side here. With a quail bellow lift lever. Oops, we forgot to put that underneath there. Yep, there it is. Now, you can see how this works. Now, it's the quail. You get these sandals out of the way. Okay, we'll start the quail up here. This is the hour. I'm just going to do it four times. See how this lever, this pin right here, 
is lowering this, pushing on this lever like a seesaw, and it's raising the the, the well, left lever over here, which then will engage the uh, cuckoo. It will cause the cuckoo to go, and it goes the cuckoo. And we're going to have to adjust this here. Let's see. Oops, sorry, I'm off camera. Okay, this will have to be bent up a little bit, it looks like. We want this to fall in the slot right here and get them off camera. Get these out of the way. We have a count wheel here from, from, count wheel here from 1 to 12, of course, for count the hours. Walking off camera. I'm sorry, guys. I know it. Bend this a little bit that way. I'm gonna take a break here, folks. Be right back. All right, folks, we're back. I just had to unplug this heater here. Just started to get too warm in here. Now where are we here with the cuckoo? Let's see. Yeah, see we're really still well, not quite there. Might be able to let me try re-indexing this wheel. Let's see if that makes any difference by just disengaging it and moving it up. A tooth or two. Oops. Mm -hmm. Oops. Mm -hmm. I do this the screwdriver is partially magnetized. See where that gets us. Okay, I'm going to have to bend this, I think, a little bit. Bend it. That way. Again, we don't want it bouncing too much on the, the top of this uh, count wheel. I want it to just, just right on top. bouncing a little bit you could say
I'm dropping into the slots properly. All right, let's switch to the other side of the movement, the front side of the movement, before we go putting in the, the pallets. We're going to put the stuff that goes on the front here on. So let's put the center post in here. It just screws in. And we can just use a pair of carefully a pair of pliers to just tighten it. Don't want to grab it here because the uh, cannon pinion has to spin on that. And we can drop this in. bit of oil on this. I like to have this just lubricated a little bit. And this is the tension spring. This provides hand tension. And you'll put a little bit of oil on top of that. Is the arrow wheel. You know, I'm going to see if I can clean that. See how tarnished that looks yet? And even as this has been through the cleaner, it's that new non ammoniated solution I'm using. So I will be right back. All right, we're back. Got this cleaned up a little bit here. Drop that in there. Yeah, we're going to need that. A washer right here and a taper pin. I'm getting low on the most popular sizes of taper pins here. Let's see, this is one here. I think that'll work. Let's see how it goes. Put a little bit of pressure on this, push it down. See how this fits in there. I think that's good. Get the excess off. And that's going to provide our hand tension. And we're going to turn it back around. back on here. All right, let's put our pallets in. We just noticed there's some rust on the, uh, the pallet arbor there. Let me go ahead and clean that off. I'll bring it right back. Okay, I just took a little miniature wire wheel and Clean this arbor off a little bit, get rid of some of rust, or get rid of all that rust, I should say. Let's go ahead and put this in here. Slide it on in. I might need to loosen these plates a little bit. Because yeah, this one does not want to just slide right in. Let's see, maybe we can get it in here. back on here. Now, 
One thing you want to be careful of is, and this is what causes a lot of cuckoo clocks to not run properly, is excessive wear here on this yoke, this is a suspension. This one has some wear and it, it was running before, so I, I know it's not going to stop the clock. So for now we're just going to put this on here. I might, before we sell it, I might replace this portion here. You might have to replace both the, the, the yoke and this portion right here if there's excessive wear on it. But this is what causes a lot of cuckoo clocks to just not run properly or not run at all. Why people try to go crazy trying to figure out what why what doesn't run. But uh, that's one thing you do have to look at. Make sure that that doesn't have excessive wear in it. Now we're going to see there's some movement on this. I'm going to see how it moves up and down. I'm going to lower it all the way and then tighten down. We'll see what we got with the escapement, see if it works properly. I think that's good. So lower it all the way down is good. Go ahead, put a little lubrication on this. the front pivot hall. Lubricate the pallets, a little drop of oil on both pallets. One would probably be sufficient. I think we're ready to put this in the case. We're going to put the chains on it. Let's see, they are here. And I'm going to put the, the birds on first. I normally don't do that, but these have a kind of unusual threaded portion here. It's not a screw. It's not even a flat. So it would be difficult to get a pair of pliers on that to turn it when you have it in the case. So I might just put a little bit of oil, just a drop of oil on. You know what? I might take a little bit of a, a brush and clean these, clean these birds off too before I put them in. Let me go ahead and take a moment to do that. And bring you back. All right, I put the chains on the movement. I've actually put the birds on. You can see here. You can see the articulation in these. They actually flap their wings and open their beaks. You can see that. Let me hold it so that you can see it. There. Come on, camera focus. So both of them do that. Now the quail bird is the red color. And the cuckoo is usually a blue color. You can see there's some original blue paint there. Somebody has attempted to paint touch it up in the past here. There's some coloration on the front that's not original. Now, we're ready to put this in the case. So let's get started. Now before we put this in the case, I wanted to point this out to you. You can see that the letters AF are stamped here on the back of the movement. This is a clock by Alexander Flieg, a very well-known German manufacturer. This is probably from about 1880. Uh, his clocks are sought after by collectors. And he's almost got the same notoriety as Johann Baptist Beha, uh, which uh, is another highly notable uh, Black Forest clockmaker from even earlier than 1880. So I just wanted to point that out, and you'll see the case in a moment, and you can understand why collectors go or go or after these type of clocks, because so this is a very highly carved clock, very very nice clock, and it's quite large. Uh, okay, let's get it in the case. See, these chains are uh, nicely shined up here. I had to use a little bit of fine grade steel wool along with the clock cleaning solution. They are uh, pure, uh, yeah, they are solid brass. So uh, not like the modern cuckoo clocks that just have a brass plate. In. So you can go ahead and clean them.
I always clean these chains when I'm overhauling an antique cuckoo clock. First thing the customer says is, oh, I see you replaced the chains. I'm like, no, did not. I'll it all just clean. Fish all the chains in here. The reason I'm assembling it this way is because of the carving on the front. It's just so intricate. I might be concerned about damaging it by laying on its face. So I normally do not assemble in this way. Especially a modern cuckoo clock. You can put it usually put it face down without any issues. Two screws in there. Now let's see if we have these birds set her properly. That one's good. Yeah, I think it might be all right. Sorry if we got my big head in the way there. longer screw in here. This one didn't seem to bite all that well. Didn't notice we had a longer one here. Anything. Sorry, let's take this long one back out and put that one in there. These are tight. Let's see if we can find a longer one for that. All right, let's connect the birds up here to the front doors. This one we might have to pivot up a little bit. And see, it's actually hitting the front there. All right. 
get this here. Bear with me, folks. Here, it's uh, trying to film a video as you're restoring an antique clock. That's its challenges. We'll try to get this hook here up front so we can hook this bird to the door. using my fingers here. There we are. And I'm going to twist the up. Uh, we don't want to make in contact here. The very base of the bill. Actually, if you can see that or not. So we'll, uh, we'll spin the bird up a little bit, and same with this one here. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see if I can just do this with my fingers since I didn't make these super duper tight. Okay. All right, let's put the weights on. First, we'll put the hooks on the chains here so we can hang the weights on. Then we'll check its operation. See the weights here, nice, nice original weights. And that was the cuckoo, this is the quail. See how that works. So I'll put the minute hand on here and check it out. That's the quail. Looks like it comes out of the door all the way. That's fine. There's your cuckoo. Let's see how that works. That's the hour. This is the quarter after. So, one call. This is the half past. Two calls. Three calls. This is going to be the hour. Take note of this lever here and the pin that actuates it right here. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit for you so you get a better view of its operation. the hour. Mr. Cooper, that looks like a function normally. 
That would be 11 o'clock there. Again, this is the half pass. Oh, I'm sorry, that's quarter after. This is, that was half past. This is quarter of. And we're coming up on the hour. This, in this case, it'll be 12 o'clock. You can see that just by the position of the count wheel. Now let's put the bellows in, you guys can get a chance to hear what it sounds like. Back you out of here. Kind of moving a little bit, right about there. Hopefully it won't block the view as I go to put these bellows on. Now this is the quail bellow here. Use original bellows. Now I did recover them. Uh, I didn't have the paper that you would put over. You can see there's like a paper, a marbleized paper that they used to put over the top of the bellow and down the sides. Uh, I just had had the original style of bellow material to cover with. Uh, there are people online that can really do a great job on recovering these, these bellows. Uh, I didn't see the need to go forward and put paper on it and everything else but you could it's something you could if you really you know wanted to make it look original now i want to go ahead and hook this in here we'll get it in position here hopefully it won't like i said block the camera view i've got to get this nail lined up back here i'm going to almost have to block the camera view to do this I can't see it. Uh, trying to find that hole. Oops, I just triggered it. Alright, I see the hole. I keep triggering it by accident here. So I'm trying to install it. And there's a locating nail here. Let's let, it, let's let it do its thing. Well, I'll tell you what, I want to take the weight off here. So we don't trigger it. Get that off. See, there's a nail in the case, and I'm just trying to get it into this hole right here. And then it just screws in. So that's what we're trying to do right now. the screw in. Again, I apologize for blocking the view here, but it's going to have to. Okay, that's it. Okay, let's put our cuckoo bellows in. Start with the one on this side. Again, we'll hook this into the appropriate lever, which is this one down here. On the other side of the hammer, there we go. And we have to get this nail in here. It's really nice that the original bellows are here and was able to use them. When you clock like this, it's you know more important to really try to maintain as much originality as you can. Okay, 
this is the last bellow. Hook this in here. Now it's going to get hooked in to this bellow lever here. You can see the whip, what they call the whip wire here. This is what actuates the, the bird and causes him to tilt up and tilt down from the front, I should say, and flip his wings and open his beak. Okay, let's see what it sounds like here. One fifteen, this is one thirty. This will be two o'clock. Pendulum hanger on. I like to put a little bit of lubrication on this. the suspension and put the hook on this chain here Put the end ring on the chain here. Use our pendulum.
a little bit out of beat here, so we'll adjustment to it. You can see the gongs back here. Most of these cuckoo quail clocks have a double gong set. This will be for the quail. Actually, this would be, yes, this would be for the quail here. And keep us from touching each other here. Huh? That's the uh, cuckoo there, which is this hammer here. The quail there, which is that hammer there. There. Make sure they're not touching each other. All right, let's put it all together. We'll hang it up on the wall and uh, show you what it looks like when it's uh, in its final assembly. It is all completed. The lighting in here is very poor, so I apologize for that. I've got my little headlamp on it to illuminate it and see what it looks like. It's a beautiful clock. Let's turn the hands around here. You can see the operation. I had to turn the clock, or yeah, I had to turn the uh, camera lengthwise to get all of it in frame. Let's see what it looks like when I go this way with it. We'll see quarter after. Top to the bottom, it's 28 inches. You can see right there, about 28 inches high. So, a very large clock. Look at all the uh, the detail with the acorns. Very neat. In depth, let's see if I can give you a depth measurement here of it. Yeah, well, if you count the deer, it's going to be around probably at least 10 inches in depth. And, and with the crossed, I'll measure here at the very top. It's going to be probably around 14 inches. Man, yeah, more like 16 inches. Yeah, looks like 16 inches at the very top across there. And at the bottom, about 15 inches. So, nice clock. Very beautiful clock. I'm going to be asking $1,500 for this. And if you're interested, uh, I'll, I'll uh, include the email down below in the comments and you can email me and uh, you know uh, find out what uh, co uh, it might shipping might cost there'll be some packing charges and shipping I would like to sell it somewhere maybe close by where we wouldn't have to deal with shipping but uh, I realize that that's not always going to be the case uh, so if you're interested contact me maybe we can work something out all right folks that's going to do it for this video thanks for coming along 
If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, uh, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification. It's going to let you know when I'm uploading a new video. Folks, this will be it for this video. Take care. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.